On today's show, could we have an A-list director helm the Silver Surfer? Captain Marvel has some impressive pre-sale numbers, and the first painting come to life since Vigo the Carpathian <laughs> attacks Jake Gyllenhaal. Movie talk starts right now. You guys get that Vigo the Carpathian yes. reference? Are you yes. kidding? He's Vigo the Carpathian. All right. Well, and Ghostbusters 2, way back in 1989, still <laughs> relevant here today, at least according to that new trailer from Netflix. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mark Ellis. That is Mark Riley. That is Dennis Zen. One of them's a hero. One of them's a villain. We're going to reveal those results in just a little bit. This is Movie Talk. And what we do, we talk about all the latest in the world of movie news, whether it's at the cinemas, whether it's at Netflix, whether it's going to be on Netflix, whether it's going to be a limited release in theaters, or whether it's a movie <laughs> We're still just speculating about which is what we kick our show off with today. Adam McKay, he directed Vice, he directed The Big Short, and before that he was known for some of the funniest movies made since the dawn of the 2000s. That would be Anchorman, Anchorman 2, Step Brothers, Ricky Bobby, the other guys. He is possibly going to be directing Silver Surfer. And I say possibly because we didn't even know there's a Silver Surfer movie coming out. MTV News asked Adam McKay if there's been any movement because Adam McKay did comment not too long in the past that he'd be into doing a Silver Surfer movie. So they're simply following up and saying, hey, Adam, any word on Silver Surfer? And he said, surprisingly, yeah, there actually has been some discussion about Silver Surfer. He said that his agent, woke up they were excited they're in the middle of backing vice obviously but who knows maybe in a couple months it could pop he was quoted as saying i really am excited about that idea so we'll see what happens i would love to see adam mckay tackle something like the silver surfer but Honestly, not as much as I like to see Adam McKay tackle real life stuff like The Big Short or Vice. He currently has a movie in the works. It stars Jennifer Lawrence. It's another biographical film. She's an entrepreneur who suddenly skyrockets to being worth well over a billion dollars. And then she starts to get investigated as to how did you become so valuable all of a sudden. That movie's called Bad Blood. That's a movie I want to see. And maybe I'm too inundated with comic book films. I don't know. Maybe I just don't care about The Silver Surfer. I think it'd be cool to have a Silver Surfer movie. I'd rather see Adam McKay do stuff like bad blood dennis how do you feel uh i do want to see a silver surfer movie especially because uh, i felt like he was done some injustice in the, in the fantastic four rise of the silver surfer mm. and also you, you saw some sort of form of galactus in that movie but not the real galactus uh adam mckay I, apparently he's a big fan in it if you've seen vice you, you can see his his love for that uh franchise I forgot too that he had actually had worked behind the scenes on Ant-Man. So mm -hmm. he does have a Marvel connection there. I think they asked Kevin Feige about this as well. And he said he hasn't taken that phone call or discussion yet, but uh, that, that he almost seemed like kind of open to it. My concern is I like Vice and I liked uh, the big short, but the he tackles that with kind of more of a dark humor, a dark com comedic tone. And Silver Surfer is not a funny character. It's mm -hmm. a serious kind of character where Norn Rad ends up uh, saving his planet from Galactus because he decides to become a herald for Galactus. So he's traveling around the the universe finding planets for Galactus basically to eat and consume. And uh, there's like, you know, tons and tons of death in it and a lot yeah. of guilty conscious and stuff like that. I, I just don't want to see any kind of like comedy coming. I, I know Marvel's known for comedy and comedic tone. I just don't know if I want to see that in a Silver Surfer movie. Yeah, and Riley, by the time this happens, a couple questions need to be answered. One, is this movie going to be Marvel within the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Is it going to be an offshoot like what we got with Venom? I mean, part of me wonders if just the success of Venom is why big-time directors might start to more seriously consider projects like that that are ancillary to the actual MCU that we know like the Avengers, but they still are comic book movies. My first question to you, though, is based on Dennis's point where the Silver Surfer is a very serious character dealing with a lot of death, do you think Adam McKay tackling that would actually put off hardcore fans of the Silver Surfer? No, I, I think that based on his work from jumping from like, a, say, an Anchorman to a big short and then Vice is that, and I just recently saw Vice and it's one of my favorite movies of 2018. It's probably my top five. I wow, loved okay. it. Mm -hmm. And I can see him being able to tone back the, the humor and really go serious because when he hits those serious beats in Big Short and Vice, they're serious. They work. And I think that he can he can maybe change it and then add that humor that he mm -hmm. likes. But yeah, there was that big Galactus reference in yes. Vice. So he's a fan of it. What I'm kind of circling and wondering here, is this having to do with the Fox Disney deal? Or is Marvel not telling us that they're actually taking meetings now and being like, okay, we might get this. Adam, what do you think? 
and he's into it. And I think that if he has so much passion to, to hide Fantastic Four Easter eggs in some of his serious movies, I think he's the right fit. And I would love to see him, you know, go all in and direct because I believe he was offered Ant-Man when Edgar Wright left. He did help Paul Rudd with the script. I think that um, there was a report too uh, that, that Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was uh, maybe floated his way as well. So I think that if if he's saying no to these things, continuing to do what he wants to do with Jennifer Lawrence, which is, I want to see that too. I want to see both. I would love to see him tackle another big, like kind of biopic kind of thing with Jennifer Lawrence and Bad Blood. And then maybe by then the Fox deal is settled and he just jumps right in and we have our next phase and maybe Galactus will be the Thanos of the, of the MCU later on down the line. That villain that is really going to knock our heroes over. And part of me just thinks that Adam McKay might want to do something like the Silver Surfer just for the reason we mentioned is that he's doing three biographical picks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically back to back to back and <laughs> it, at some point you might get tired of having to stick to some semblance of facts for what we think history told us where with Silver Surfer sure there's lore and mythology you want to stick with but you can also just make it your own a little bit more than you could something like a factual story that happened not even a decade ago so maybe for a director that might be a little more creatively stimulating with the overall scope of the mcu acquiring fox do you think that that's the way we're going to see movies go in this world that if you're a marvel property you are automatically connected to one universe or do you think that is there any chance that we still get to keep separate universes much like what dc is doing with the joker movie starring joaquin phoenix no oh, i don't i mean i think they're they're going on kevin feige has been on record recently and i can't i don't know the publication but where he's like, it's very exciting to get most every single hero under the banner. You could, and I think he's he's excluding the Venoms for now. We do have Spider-Man. I don't know how long that deal will last, mm -hmm. but Sony has Spider-Man and all those ancillary characters. But then if you get the Fox deal, you have pretty much every single character in the MCU, barring Namor, which I think is still tied up in Universal somehow. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they're going to want to keep that shared universe going. I think that's what Marvel does best, and they, they're the ones that created it. Everybody's been trying to replicate yeah. the MCU and uh, hasn't been working for, in, you know, in various ways for a lot of studios. So I think they stick with it. Yeah, I think it's it's for branding and marketing purposes. Everything yep. that you stick in them. I mean, that's how they were to uh, sell different uh, franchises that people know about. Let's, let's say Guardians of the Galaxy. The first time that came out, the only reason they were able to sell that was because they had the Marvel brand and said, okay, this is part of the MCU. So people were more willing and open to watch it. And I, I think actually Adam McKay, when you're talking about possibly him for Guardians 3, I think that's a better fit and maybe he does that and maybe segues into silver surfer later it doesn't yeah. mean they they don't have to do a silver surfer right now they already kind of missed the opportunity to utilize him because he was such a big part in the original infinity gauntlet, right. gauntlet storyline in the comic books and so since that's already passed you by you don't have to rush his character in plus you might want to build the fantastic four first yeah and then maybe silver surfer later uh, the chat room has been asked what they think of Adam McKay possibly directing the Silver Surfer. It's an overwhelming yes. The Sir yeah. Charles says, yes, I do. Joy Devil says, Sentinel, the space waste for Adam McKay is what he wants to see him do. John Alexander says, absolutely. And Star Kid Potter says, I wouldn't care either way. Right now, all I want to do is run a hand through Ellis's hair. Is it? <laughs> That's, yeah. There you go. I do too. How's that? Yeah. Better? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I did Looking it for you. good, Did Alice. it for you, Star Kid. Our next story <laughs> involves villains, because what are we excited about? Glass. That's right. The movie Glass is coming up. Some of us has already gotten the chance to see it, and we've had a lot of fun around the office this week taking the quiz. You can take right now, actually. Just go to glassherovillain.com. You answer some questions that are timed, and it's questions about what would you do in this situation or that situation. You answer as honest as you can, and it'll tell you whether you're a villain or a hero. We're focusing on villains today because you have this video that we're running concurrently with me talking about this quiz we took the test gentlemen oh yeah most of us are villains guys most of us in this <laughs> clutter offices i think riley estimated at 85 percent of us about to be, it looks that way yeah if and you're to do the math i yeah. mean I, I saw people take this quiz live and they answered different questions than i did i was a villain and the, i was like oh okay here comes the hero and they sure enough became a villain dennis zen how did you fare in the glass hero or villain Dot com yeah, course. I ended up uh, becoming a villain. 
Uh, no, no big surprise. No, I, yeah. I, I do a lot of plotting and scheming and a lot of mastermind stuff. So you do. So therefore, uh, the villain was not a surprise. <laughs> villain was not a surprise for Dennis. Mark Riley, I was surprised. Not because I don't think that you are a heroic individual, but none of us were getting hero. We started to think it didn't exist in this <laughs> office, and then you come along. Well, yeah, the, the villains of Collider Live uh, yesterday, uh, they were pushing things around. They were making some, uh, some, some scheming. Harloff said something that was really villain. I mean, he, he was just like... That doesn't I, I, sound like him. Yeah, yeah, superpower. He was like, I want the power of persuasion so I can walk in the room and get anything I want. I'm like, that's a, that's a villain move right there, buddy. Uh, that's so I took a the quiz. a beleaguered father or it's, a villain. Sure. <laughs> so I took the quiz, and uh, rightly so. I'm a hero. I'm here to stop all of you. Uh, everybody here <laughs> in the office is now under my watch, and I'm um, looking forward to uh, taking out the trash. So we, we can't blame Riley when anything gets stolen out of the fridge. <laughs> Any food gets stolen out of the fridge. No. We know, we know it's not Riley. It's not me because somebody stole mine too. Yeah. yeah. I had a whole like Was there an incident? Thing. Was there a lunch incident? No. The, I always wondered when it was going to happen. I mean, I, I think people were pretty good about except for when we tape schmodowns here and then all. Oh, yeah. All bets are off. All sorts of stuff breaks loose. People are taking beers in and out of the fridge. Yeah, I, don't think, I don't think lunch, uh, but drinks disappear. Drinks disappear. Yeah. Uh, some Someone thought that my actual food, that were leftovers from my previous dinner the night before, but they thought it was had been sitting there for many oh. days, months, what have you, and they just poured that out, and I was like, without lunch that well, day. That That's is, what happened to, yeah. to, see this? See this cup? Yeah. Put my name on it. There it is. Why? Because someone threw out my brand new, I just bought it, <laughs> I drank half of it, I put it in the fridge, and, and I it, came back a few hours later, it was tossed out. Gone. I was, like, I was like, that's it. I'm putting my name from now on. Every time I buy one, I just put my name <laughs> on it. Quite that. a villainous yes. thing to do, and that is a little Milton Wadhams of a thing to yeah. do, just to make sure you get a little label. Don't yeah. take Dennis's cup or his stapler. You guys can take the quiz at glasshero.villain.com, and I think it's great that Riley was a hero. Also, Thad Williams was the other hero. Uh, yes. Of course he was is, that, is that the only two in the office? Rumor has it Cody yeah. Hall was also a hero. Okay, I can see um, that. But I haven't seen those results up close. I do know that Josh McCuga, Roxy Stryer, Dorian Parks, Christian, Perry Nemiroff, John Roca, Dennis, and myself are all villains. Oh, Perry's so. a villain. I, I think I would have gone the Perry's other way with her. Yeah, she loves she loves some horror movies, and maybe she loves them a little too much because she is indeed a villain. And Riley, I think it's great that you're a hero, but if you think you you're, can you're, stop you're, us with your pitiful little band, this is like yeah. Spider Man against the Sinister Six. <laughs> yeah, here. I you're, like you're it. You're grossly I like those odds. That's grossly all outnumbered. Right. Good luck to this. you, buddy. It's not going to work out well for you. <laughs> See if you're a hero or a villain. Glasshero.villain.com, and make sure you check out the movie when it comes out. In a couple weeks as we have here at the office you can check out all the re reviews on collider video and on schmoes no right now also want to remind y'all that an all-new jedi council is now up the gang got together this morning to talk all things latest and greatest in the world of star wars um we have a new riley roundtable up who's your who's your guest on that is it another hero it's uh well it's debatable jack hind came on jack hind our jack own hind. jack hind if i met jack hind in a movie Mm -hmm. I would probably say you're too nice, and so you're going to double-cross me at some yeah, point. Yeah. He's a villain for sure. Oh, oh, wow, okay. Well, yeah, he's a villain for <laughs> more bold about it than I was. Yeah, because he's, like, nice, and then so you think there's, like, an ulterior motive. Well, just say it very right. fast yeah. for yeah. me. Jack plus, Hind. Plus, he's English, he's, so he's got that accent, right? Like, that. The, what was that one commercial in the, during the Super Bowl that had, like, all the English Oh, characters yeah, all the Stone English villains. Yeah. I think it was a Beamer commercial, yeah, yeah, talking about how villains just have more fun. If Jack Hind shows up in a Paddington movie, don't trust him. <laughs> he is out to get that little bear and put him back in jail. I'll, uh, I'll go the other way. Because uh, listen to the Riley Roundtable. He's fantastic. It was a great show. It was a great uh, conversation. And just listen. Jack Hind. Jack Kind. Jack is kind. Jack's a hero. I'll just go there. Check out the Riley Roundtable for there more wordplay. You guys can download that episode right now. And Perry Nemiroff had an exclusive set visit to the set of Captain Marvel. You can check that out on Collider.com right now. Speaking of Captain Marvel, that's our next story. As I once again run my hand through my hair to <laughs> see what happens. It's just getting worse, isn't it? Captain Marvel is now the third 
place record holder as far as MCU movies go for online sales, according to Fandango. This report comes to us via deadline. So Captain Marvel, it's now third in the record books behind what movies? in the MCU, Avengers Infinity War and Black Panther. So those were the two record setters. Uh, Captain Marvel not getting there, but defeating movies such as any other MCU movie. People are saying it's a safe bet mm -hmm. that Captain Marvel opens to a $100 million plus for its first domestic weekend. Black Panther, uh, I think sixth all time with its opening yeah. weekend, $202 million. $200 million. And obviously Avengers Infinity War became the biggest opening, unseating Star Wars The Force Awakens with $257 million. So throwing a lot of numbers y'all's way. Where is Captain Marvel going to land when it's all said and done after its opening weekend, which is May 8th? March. March 8th? March 8th, yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm going yeah, up. May 8th would be after Infinity War or yeah. Part 2 or Time Endgame. Might be Sorry, a little Endgame. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It's definitely gonna open. I think uh, above 100. North of 100. North of 100. I'm gonna go 110. And the reasons why is like one, uh, first female-led MCU movie with Captain Marvel. Two, we're coming up on Endgame. The hype is so unreal right now to just get any kind of hints for Endgame, and I know we'll probably get some kind of maybe post credit scene in Captain Marvel. I know it's a prequel, so we're not gonna get a lot. We're gonna get maybe some cameos of some of our Avengers, uh, de-aged, I know we have Clark Gregg coming back, we have Nick Fury, we have this great adventure happening. Um, so I think the hype is so real, because we wanna, this is gonna lead us right into an Endgame. So there's gonna be something in that movie, probably in a post credit, that's going to set up her appearance in Endgame. You add that on there, you add that it's the Marvel brand, you add that it looks good, it looks great, I can't wait to see it. The de-aging, mm -hmm. the possibility of cameos, and then the idea here, these are some numbers that, are, that we can back this up, um, at least over 100. So I'm going 110, I think it's gonna be a, a huge opening. He's going 110, Dennis. I think that uh, Riley speaks with the sage wisdom of a hero mm -hmm. for a number of reasons, <laughs> not the least of which is that people are excited about Endgame, and not just that we're going to get a, a hint of Endgame in Captain Marvel, but also how Captain Marvel, the character, is going to factor into this movie. I love that Samuel L. Jackson, when he was being interviewed for Glass, was teasing that how powerful she is and that she's the one that could balance the, the power in this Marvel Cinematic Universe. And so I think people hear that and they're like, I need to go check this movie out because I want to see just how powerful she is. Yeah, I, uh, I'm going to go higher than Riley. Yeah? All yeah, right, I'm going to say that over 120. I'm going to say 120. I'm going right. to say the, the thing about uh, Captain Marvel is before Infinity War, I would say 80, yeah. 90 million, yeah. right? Just because of that post credit scene. That's like the best marketing move you can have for a movie. Now, I say over 120 because everyone wants to see th this character, just that the simple little thing. And then I, I also believe like a post, I think the whole movie will be set in the past, yeah. except for the post credit scene, mm -hmm. which is she'll probably get the, the page and then fly off and that's that's it and then then we go see infinity or sorry end game i want to say infinity war part two because that's what it originally <laughs> was called and that's exactly what the the movie is they just changed it for marketing purposes um is going to lead right into Endgame. So. Yeah, I, I like a uh, I like a hundred and twenty five million dollar opening. I like somewhere right around oh, there. Right. But I again, Dennis and I are villains drunk off our own power, yes. so we're going a little bit higher than the more <laughs> conservative guessing. Riley, I'm excited <laughs> to see this movie come out. I'm excited to see Endgame, obviously. But isn't it funny how far we've come in what two years since we enjoyed those post credit scenes from Spider Man Homecoming because it was Captain America just making fun of the fact that we see post credits. Can yes. you imagine the uproar if we see Captain Marvel and we're waiting for that last tease of Endgame and it's Captain America again just being like, <laughs> just relax. We would be, we would lose our minds. Yes. What if it's Captain Marvel and she's just standing there and we're waiting she's like, <laughs> Just bye. You really think I'm going to do this, guys? She fares Bueller, is it? <laughs> yeah, she fares it. <laughs> You're still here? Go home. Go. And you're just like, all right, dude, well, that's that. If she does that, and again, the movie comes out, not May, but March, <laughs> you can go right home. You know, you can watch at home. If you have a Netflix subscription, you can watch Velvet Buzzsaw. Hell yeah. 
because that movie is going to debut on Netflix and in select theaters. It's directed by Dan Gilroy. Did I get your attention yet? He's the guy that's done movies like Nightcrawler. You know who stars in Nightcrawler? Jake Gyllenhaal. Some say he got robbed of an Academy Award nomination. He was so good in it. He's one of our best actors, and he's the star of Velvet Buzzsaw. But he's not the only one coming to the party. You also have Tony Collette in there. There's a host of really good actors. John Malkovich is in there. Tom Sturridge. Uh, Zoe Ashton. This movie had its trailer debut. That's why we're talking about it. It looks, it looks awesome. I can't wait to see this movie. Paintings are coming to life. There's some guy who's dead, and he made a bunch of paintings, and you put the paintings up, and if you stare at them for too long, they start to move a little bit, and it's this cool trick, and then all the, wait a minute, these paintings aren't just moving. They're making us do things. They're killing people. It's, these paintings really, you talk about art critics taking it seriously. These are some paintings you should take seriously. The movie drops on Netflix in February. Dennis Zen, did this movie grab you like a painting might grab somebody in this trailer? Yeah, definitely. It got me before I even saw the trailer just because of Dan Gilroy. I, I loved uh, Nightcrawler. I was one of those people that thought Jake Gyllenhaal should have got an Oscar nomination yeah. for that role. I like the trailer because in the beginning, it almost seems like it's like a, a, a satire on the art community. Mm -hmm. And then it twists into the horror slant. And I still think, that's. I think some people who didn't enjoy Nightcrawler uh, didn't see it the way I saw it. I saw it as, as a dark comedy, even though it was, you know, very, yeah. very dark. Yeah. Um, I was laughing at certain things that, you know, were, you know, very serious, but I think it was done with a purpose. And I think this one might have that same effect. And it's just great that Netflix is, you know, having all these movies like, uh, Bird Box. Just everyone's talking about Bird Box during the break, you know. Mm -hmm. And then they, I think it was like their highest viewed movie. Uh, Forty five million uh, clicks so, some, in something one week. Like so. that. And it became like a meme. Everyone's doing the the Bird Box challenge, even though they, Netflix told people not Dummies. to. Because yeah, <laughs> stop um, it. But you know, Netflix is coming out with a bunch of cool stuff that you Netflix see. Had I, you to know. tell people not to. They, yes. Yeah, they did. Like, they they had to tell people to stop putting on blindfolds and running into walls. Just uh, Guys, <laughs> stop running around with blindfolds. Stop eating Tide Pods. Yeah, exactly. really I have to tell you this? Yeah, I mean, when uh. you had people eating Tide Pods, we, we knew it was over. Uh, <laughs> Captain Marvel, come save us. But, I mean, but you know, other stuff like uh, the, the, the Fire Festival, the greatest party that never happened oh trailer God, came out today. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to that. I just watched Roma. You know what I mean? There's just a lot of cool stuff. It's Netflix is just changing the game in terms of what you know movies are it, uh, we all love the theatrical experience but not always we can go out there and there's another movie that they said is going to be in select theaters right mm -hmm. so you can check it out in the theater or you can check it out at home yeah i think uh, this is one i think this is a good home view i, I think mm -hmm. that it just feels like and, and again i really like the trailer but it's like you could go to the theater right and be like what the, this isn't what i signed up for this is a great movie you put on for 10 minutes and if it's not the tone that you thought it might be from the trailer you just you click to you something else off, right yeah. you can yeah i ain't clicking away from this one though this this looks phenomenal and based on nightcrawl or one of my favorites from uh, of that year, uh, and agree with you. I think Jake Gyllenhaal deserved an Oscar nomination. Rene Ru Russo is also in this, so we get a, another uh, kind of reunion here of Nightcrawler. But the cast looks phenomenal. I love that pivot where you're watching it. It did look like a satire. We're going to make fun of the art community. John Malkovich is there. It, like Jake Gyllenhaal, the minute he's doing the glasses thing and he's like putting yeah. it on, he's looking. <laughs> I'm like, this is great. What is what is he doing here? What is Dan Gilroy doing? I remember it being announced and and didn't understand what the tone was going to be and then that art piece mm -hmm. android thing comes to life and i'm like we got something special here i love the idea of paintings coming to life i love the the effects work there i love that it, it seems to be like interdimensional somehow like the the monkeys in the in the painting that then through the mirror grab i don't know what's going on yeah. this is great i'm totally into this one and i love and love that these movies are coming on netflix because bird box no idea was coming out. Mm. Then I start seeing and start hearing about it. And I think this movie can do the same thing. Drum up some conversation online. Mm. And then you're like, whoa, I got to watch this right away. You dim the lights, you pop some wine, and you put this on and you have a great date night at home. Yeah. My only complaint, though, is I do think the trailer is a little spoilery. Like, yeah, I worry about that, that too. Happened it's in a great out. point. The trailer itself. It's a I, little. I, I yeah. wish, like, I could have seen the movie and seen those things happen for the first time. Yeah. There's something with, uh, actually, I don't know. If, you know if people are going to watch it or not. I mean, I, I, want, I don't want to say it here in case you want to yeah. hold off. But there's certain something that happened. So, in there. so yeah, if you're, you're inter like, already interested in seeing the movie, 
don't watch the just trailer. from hearing us talk yes, about yes. it or or you see the name dan gilroy You're like dan gilroy i think is becoming one of those people where if he's involved in something you want to check it out and that's nothing to say about the star power that a jake gyllenhaal would have a, a tony collette would have because if you saw hereditary you definitely want to see what she's bringing to the table now mm-hmm. uh, renee russo's in this too so they, I, I think that the it, th- this movie sells itself but it feels like and particularly with the netflix movies i felt the same way about the bird box trailer is netflix trying too hard to sell their movies in a way that they're giving away a lot of the plot in their trailers. Hmm. They could, maybe they, I mean, look, this is something that has been happening quite a bit. We, we get, especially these big, big movies. Mm-hmm. Um, I think about The Force Awakens. I, I probably saw the whole movie by the time I got in the, <laughs> in, in the theater. And I, they were like, no, nah, you didn't see everything. And it's like, well, you, you showed a lot. And I think that they're... they're the, the marketing campaigns, they want to hook you, mm-hmm. and maybe some of the, the great things that happened at the end of this was in there. I don't know, but they want to hook you. So I, I would say pull back a little bit. But in general, I think Netflix, aside from theaters and big budget movies that are coming to the theaters that everybody's circling on their calendar, Netflix, I, I don't know. You could, you could argue two sides of this. Mm-hmm. That one, it's you can just turn it on at home. So you, maybe it's a built-in audience. You don't have to see a lot of trailers because if you hear enough and you go, oh, Jake Gyllenhaal's in this, or Rene Russo, I like those. This trailer looks great. Um, Netflix does that great thing now. When you hover your, your browser over it, it plays the trailer yes. for you. Maybe that's enough. But um, I think that in general, that question, pull back on all your marketing. Don't show us anything. Think about what the, uh, the Russos are saying. Only 15 minutes from Endgame is all you need to sell that movie. Well, I that's think- what I think is happening. I think that you see course correction, particularly with franchises that can afford it. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, even something like Episode Nine, I don't think needs to sell itself on us. I think we're going to go see that movie, especially Avengers Endgame, you right. know, because, because Infinity War doesn't come with any of the you know division within the fan base that The Last Jedi brought. So Endgame knows it doesn't need to sell itself, and mm-hmm. so they don't need to show 20 yeah. minutes. But I, Dennis, I still think Netflix is, it feels like they're, they're in that proving ground. Yes. Where they're the little brother that just wants to prove that they can play varsity. Yeah, and right now, you know, before they started with the prestige films, right, uh, and with Roma, to see what that does at the Oscars, and then they're going to, you know, have bigger budgeted stuff to try and compete with with the stuff from the studios. Uh, right. Also wondering, like, does John Malkovich have some sort of deal with Netflix? I that know. He, that he has to be in, like, every one of their, 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 their uh, Netflix movies or something Is like that? Is he one of those actors that you, just, you just never say no to, though? Yeah, like, yeah. if he wants to be in your movie, it, 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 come on, we'll find a role for you. You're, yeah, you you're John Malkovich. You don't say no. Yeah, you just like whatever you want. Yeah, sure. You want to play Captain Marvel? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're in. You're in. Uh, fun fact about Dan Gilroy. He also wrote this movie. He, he writes a lot of the movies. You know, he did. Yeah. Uh, he wrote uh, Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler too. Do you know the first screenplay that Dan Gilroy is credited with mm. on IMDb? Wait. Came out in 1992. 1992. 1992. Give me a genre. Um, sci-fi. <laughs> science fiction. Uh, futuristic sci-fi. Futurist. Yeah. And now I, I'll give you a hint, but it's really going to lean towards Riley. Mm. Unless Dennis has also I feel like been I in the this. restroom of Sam Levine's house. Oh my God. Right. Th- uh, what is that? What is up Get there? there. Kill Emilio shot? Estevez. Kill shot? No. In That's Free Jack. Free Jack. Uh, yeah. Not right. seen it. Dan Gilroy, the first yeah. thing he's credited with Free Jack. <laughs> For those of you who don't know Free Jack, Emilio Estevez is a race car driver. Rene Russo's in that too. And he, uh, he he gets in an accident, but it looks like he's in an accident and he dies, but he doesn't. He actually just got shot into 18 years into the future, which would be, what, 2010? Remember that? Yeah. Mick Jagger's a bad guy and they're trying to chase around Anthony Hopkins in it. I don't, Rene Russo yeah, is in Sam it? Sam Levine apparently loves it. I had no idea he loved that movie until I saw the poster at his place. And I'm like... <laughs> Not everybody's got a free Jack yeah. poster, yeah. you know? You, you see a lot of Godfather posters at people's places. You'll see some Star Wars stuff. I've never seen a free Jack poster up. Sam Levine has it. So. And he's yeah. not in the movie, right? He's a, Sam no. Levine's not in free Jack. Okay. Just Just, he's a, he's an actual, actual fan. Okay. He's an actual okay. fan, yeah. It's, it's I hope great. he's okay with us talking about what goes on in Sam's bathroom. <laughs> but Great bathroom. It's a free Jack, but the bathroom's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> i remind you guys that we have an all-new TV talk that is is going to be tomorrow. You can check it out around here at Collider as well as Mailbag. You get the Mailbag shows hosted by Perry Nemiroff every Saturday and Sunday. Perry's got a special guest with her each and every day to talk about your viewer questions, which is what we're about to do. Take some of your live Twitter questions. You can start tweeting us anytime at Collider Video. Use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk. I want to give a shout out to uh, 
uh, Chuck Souza, who's been uh, tweeting at us all week since he took the Glass Hero or Villain quiz. He also got Hero. He was the first person I saw to get Hero. So right he just on. wanted to let us know that Mark Riley, Chuck has your back. Good. We're going uh, to have to form up and create our Avengers to take on these Sinister Six over here. I would just pay to see you, Chuck, that, and Cody lined up like the Avengers, <laughs> the, all the carnage going on around you. guys you. just walk through us. <laughs> Get out of the way. I'm and, uh, sorry. Star Kid Potter, uh, there's an update on the hair uh, debacle. Star Kid Potter is now saying that uh, if Star Kid Potter was here and could just get a comb and, and some spritzer, they could they could handle this. This is a true story. I'm actually getting my haircut right after the show today. So this is going to be enjoy great. Enjoy while you can. Yeah, because it's all <laughs> it's all coming off. It's all going away. <laughs> get gonna get, get that shaving the head. Gonna get that jarhead buzz cut ready for yeah. the award show this Saturday. Look at that, Adam. Whoa. You guys can come to the movie trivia showdown awards. The 2018 season is being awarded, and we're gonna have a whole lot of fun. It's gonna be one hell of a party at the Comedy Store this weekend, Saturday. Doors open 12:45. Show starts by 1:30 at the very latest. Make sure you guys grab your tickets. They're just 15 bucks, two drink minimum. Go ahead and get in there, have some fun. Many of your favorite showdown luminaries will be on hand celebrating the year that was in the movie trivia showdown as we look ahead to a very exciting 2019 all right twitter questions here yeah. we are whoa c-dub chris woodburn our old buddy <laughs> talking some smack to our hero on here saying hey riley my cowboy is going to beat your rams i hope they don't um, no because i hate the cowboys i hate the cowboys and he says if you could go back in time to watch a film for the first time what film would you choose so you can reverse free jack and go back and see a movie that you've seen but now you get to see it again for the very first time what are you taking you know what I'm taking. Free Jack. Not Free Jack. Jaws? Yeah, I'm uh, taking okay. Jaws. There's a Jaws reference. I told you I'd put one in there. <laughs> I'd see Jaws. I want to see. I, I always wonder what that opening weekend is like because it's the first blockbuster. And so what are people, are they screaming? They're yelling. I've heard, like Dreyfus says, that people are walking out of there, uh, you know, puking. I would love <laughs> to see a 1975 audience you know, indoctrinated to the first movie that started the blockbuster craze. Cause I think uh, the, the audience reaction would be incredible, especially when Ben Gardner comes in there. Ben Gardner's boat. Oh yeah. Not anymore. Um, I, on that note, Dennis, I think I might, one of my top contenders would be going back two years before Riley going mm -hmm. to 1973 to see the exorcist. Oh, that, that's that another good the same one. Same kind of reaction yes. where people were just free. People that's were losing great their one. minds in that movie theater. I'm still taking Jurassic Park though. I just love the feeling I had when I was tw 11, 12 in that theater yeah. and just, and seeing dinosaurs, these were real dinosaurs for the first time ever. Like you'd see, you know, shows and stuff and they try to do dinosaur effects and just never really looked all that real plan of the dinosaurs an all time great bad movie. This is Jurassic Park and these dinosaurs are real and it was an awesome theater experience. So I'll take JP. How about you, sir? I'll go with Star Wars. Just, yeah, I mean, that's one, one. thing. I'm sure that's a lot of people, but for me, it's like, of course, everyone loved it the first time they saw it, but the first time I saw it was, you know, on television, on VHS with a group of friends, and I was younger, and so it was, you know, had already been past being in the theaters. I would love to have seen it for the first time in the theaters with a ton of people and yeah. just having my mind blown all over again. Yeah, right when that blockade runner comes over and yeah. the crawl happens what's that audience i like? mean because yeah, you know a as, a, as a kid when you watch that it's like nothing you've ever seen before yeah so. yeah or uh space balls when the even bigger <laughs> spaceship comes. i remember my theater experience with that yeah. i remember the audience losing it because it was just it kept going oh, and really then, yeah i was in the <laughs> audience because then the, then the music kind of goes down and it keeps going and then the music goes Jean. and it keeps so going and the audience funny. lost it i remember that is a very vivid memory of mine the so. great bumper stickers of space balls we yeah. break for nobody and i love your anus <laughs> jay scott st Clair is up next uh, i was asking this question a couple different times better mike judge cult classic comedy in your opinion office space mm. or idiocracy no. office space. office space okay yeah yeah I, I i like idiocracy as well but i think office space is more rewatchable i yeah. actually watched that in the theater i think uh me, you were the one me yeah me and my <laughs> girlfriend at the time we were like maybe one of like five or six people in the theater wow and that was yeah. like opening weekend yeah. too and i was like damn and i thought it was great you know and but and that was back when uh, jennifer aniston i think was she still doing friends at the time yeah yeah and, yeah and so like she wasn't like she was known as the friends girl and she's gone on and been become a lot bigger and then the whole thing is just a cult classic so. yeah it's a it's a perfect comedy i just love it so much so yeah 
Yeah, I, I've never seen Idiocracy. People tell me I'd love it. I've seen um, it. So. I, I can't remember it. I, I hear it's No, it's good. It's, over, good. it's a great concept. Uh, rewatching yeah. it. I hear it's rewatchable. Like, well, meaning I haven't rewatched it, but I hear that it gets better on, on a rewatch. You know what the concept is, though, right? I do, yeah. Okay, so yeah. It's, it's, it's a relevant concept. It's very yeah, it's, relevant. It's, concept. It feels like it might be a little too relevant. Yeah. That's yeah. why I enjoy scary. Office Space, because I don't actually work. I don't actually work in this <laughs> office. I show up and I do a show and then I get to leave before I start getting possessive about my office items or somebody steals my drink like yes. Dennis. Villain. Um, our <laughs> Mario is last and Mario's got a very fun and tough question to answer. Uh -oh. says you get one choice of this character. Who would make more of an impact if they made a cameo in Avengers Endgame? Ooh. Is it A, Silver Surfer? Okay. B, Professor X, or C, Mr. Fantastic. Now, Mario did us the benefit of casting these people, too. So he said Silver Surfer should be played by Ryan Gosling. Yes, Professor X being played by Brian Cranston. Mr. Fantastic being played by John Krasinski. Great. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk about the characters for now. Character. Which character would make the biggest impact if they showed up in Endgame? Silver Surfer, Professor X, or Mr. Fantastic? Well, I got mine. It's, it's got to be Professor X because that signals that we have the X-Men. Mm -hmm. And I think, that's, I think the X-Men are, are more popular, at least for, for the fans, to see what that would look like in the MCU. So I think Professor X would be a very powerful moment where you're like, well, there are mutants now, and that's going to change the MCU. I wouldn't say Silver Surfer yet, um, because of the cosmic element of mm -hmm. Silver Surfer, we have the cosmic universe happening right now. We kind of know what it's going to look like. Fantastic Four, I think, would be great, too. Um, that's, that's a huge property that I want to see in the MCU. But if you tell me that there's going to be mutants in the MCU sometime, that's including me. I am very excited to that at, at that prospect. I mean, I got excited hearing Riley talk about it. It's not going to happen because they still it's have to get through these, these other, yeah. the new mutants and dark phoenixes of the world and stuff like that. So I don't think it's going to, if it did, it would, people's jaws would hit the floor yep. if a Professor X showed up somewhere in Endgame. Mm -hmm. They'd be, they might be excited if Mr. Fantastic or the Silver Surfer show up, but Dennis, I don't think it has anywhere near the impact of Professor X. Yeah, mm -hmm. Professor X, I think the only issue is that we're so used to the idea of both Patrick Stewart and James McAvoy as that character. So if you, let's say you do a Brian Cranston, who would be great in the role, but just the visual of him coming out and being Professor X wouldn't have it the, as the same impact. Because if Patrick Stewart came out, oh, if it's, yeah, yeah, people even would James lose, McAvoy, yeah, like, people would lose their minds. Yeah, but so yeah, it would be Professor X. But I think visually, yeah, if, if it was one of those actors. All right. Well, we'll have to wait to see who shows up in Endgame. Is it going to be one of those heroes or will it just be Mark Riley? He's a hero. <laughs> he took the quiz. <laughs> I just walk up at the end and like whoever's there, all the, the remaining Avengers. Hey, guys, uh, it said I was a hero. I don't know. Can I, I be just, here? I would love to see you show up at, like during a bank robbery and just hold up your phone like, hey, I took the quiz. I'm a hero. Halt. I'll, I'll take care of this. Halt, evildoer. <laughs> don't worry. I got this, ma'am. <laughs> all the robbers. Hero. They just hand over their gun. They're like, we're yeah. so sorry. Don't, like, don't had, hurt us. I had no idea. Is that, wait, is that a gun? No, it's a phone. <laughs> Well, that's going to do it for us here for today and for this week of Collider Movie Talk. I want to thank my esteemed panelist, Dennis Zen. What are you doing this weekend? Where can all the kids find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero and Instagram Dennis.TZNG. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be around. Be around. <laughs> be around this weekend. That's so villainous. Yeah. What a villainous. So villainous. I, I have a lot of schemes and plots to, to, to hash out. <laughs> oh, my Dennis God. going to be lurking, watching a wall with a lot of different TVs with cameras yes. in different places. How about you, Mark Riley? Are you going to be uh, hanging out with your butler? Uh, dang, you know, my butler, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you can hang out with me at the uh, Schmodown Awards. I will be there on Saturday. That's going to be a lot of fun. Are you presenting? Uh, I am not presenting. I'm sitting back and enjoying uh, <laughs> the beverages and uh, maybe, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm going to win. It's a stacked uh, nomination, uh, a lot of uh, deserving winners, but I'll take a win if it, if it happens. Great. All right, well, maybe you hear Mark Yodi Riley's name mentioned by either a presenter saying who won or you just hear him mentioned by me in my opening monologue. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can I'll also catch it. me at the Comedy Store that night. I'm going to be doing some stand-up after the Schmodown Awards. So it's going to be a busy day for me. You can come watch all the carnage once again at the Comedy Store Saturday, this Saturday, January 12th. Then immediately after the awards, before I do my set, you can watch the Rams hopefully beat the Cowboys and all the other NFL action. They'll talk about that on Sports Time on Monday. That's all for us, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for joining us. From us to you, have a great and safe weekend. Be a hero, not a villain. 
Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Movie Talk. You want to watch more? Then click up here or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. And if you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.